It's all connected. 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 It's all Anyway, it's uh, Monday, November 16th, 2020, right here on RealLibertyMedia.com and RLMRadio.xyz. I'm here with, I'm Grimner, and I'm I'm here with my lovely co-host, Cirque. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) 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 Haven't got that little, uh, Cirque. Hello. Circaline. Uh, your, your actual yeah. name is Circaline, right? Circaline. Circaline. Yeah. 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 So, name. anyway, uh, for the uh, this morning here, just moments ago, we we got information about our good buddy Sock Puppet down there in Florida. He's helped us out with a lot of stuff, and uh, uh, we we got to wish him uh, the best. Uh, best. Send your good energies. His direction, uh, he's uh, in the hospital, apparently, with some severe yeah, medical that's, issues. That's so good. Yeah, yeah so. Puppet. Come on, sock. Pull it through. Yeah. Pull through. We don't yep. need, we don't, we, we, we've had enough tragedy here at RLM over recent years. I know we're all getting older, but, uh, and stuff happens. Yeah, but, sadly. Uh, yeah, yeah, sadly. But we want you, we want you around over here. So yeah. fix that. Fix. May you may you get many boat rides, more sock puppets. That's right. Go get them big marlin or whatever it is you fish yeah. for. Yeah. And uh, and uh, energy, Ooh, send my energy your way. Um. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe if if you just if maybe Grimner, if you do really stupid stuff for a period, the gods will look at you and not at sock puppet. Okay, I don't know. I'm not really good with stupid stuff, but um, <laughs> all right. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I think there's enough stupid people in the world that I, I don't need to. I, I, don't, I don't need to do that. No, you're yeah. probably right. Well, yeah, best yeah. wishes to suck puppet, anyways. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. So anyway, today uh, this is episode eighteen. Of the It's All Connected program, and our topic today, now I was given four possible topic ideas, and I picked the one I liked the best. Not that it'll necessarily be the main um, topic of this show, but the topic today is, will giant meteor legalize cannabis? Ooh. <laughs> yes. Giant. And, and to Rob, I, and Rob, I am kind of dark. That's that I have a dark sense of humor, and I have a dark sense of uh, rationalizing when really sad things happen. Yeah, yeah. And you really don't want the gods looking at you. No, you're you're That's better the off. the shit gods do. You're better off not being on their on their radar. <laughs> yeah, that the gods fuck you all. Oh yeah. man, yeah. yeah. So will giant media legalize cannabis, Grimmia? I know, but we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. But we're, we're we'll going to start there. off with topic idea number one, which is: okay. Is enhanced always better? I'm okay. going to have to go ahead before we even get into it, and before I understand what you meant by that, and say no, because always, Big, always fat, no. <laughs> because putting the word always in there um yeah nothing is always something i mean it, it, it all depends on uh the need of the person for whatever purpose uh that whatever it is that you're enhancing so what uh, what was your idea your concept behind that question well i was thinking about well enhancing Enhancing. That was that was pretty much it. The the concept of um, enhancing, because I I seem we seem to be trapped in this loop of um, enhancements. 
Okay, well, give me an and example. It, well, it's just, you know, we, we want to enhance everything. We want the en enhanced monitors, the enhanced phones, the enhanced everything. We got this um, planned obsolescence, which is like built-in enhancements, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, for me, um, uh, you, and you mentioned phones there, I I liked it better when there was pre, pre, before cell phones. I didn't like so I did when when they came out with beepers. Remember those? Um, yeah, yeah. I, people never were, had one of those. No, I didn't either. But people were walking around with their freaking beepers on all the time. Not a, not everybody, just a few idiots, you know. But or, or I could understand it for things like you know uh, uh, people that are out on service calls or whatever, you know, plumbing or those kind of repair type things. Um, hmm. yeah, I, I can understand it for that. You know, okay, you got another job when you're finished with this one. Here's the, here's the deal or, you know, whatever, call the office. Um, but, uh, no, I, I, I've, I've not, I, 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 I'm not a fan of cell, cell phones and this total connectivity, uh, where, where it's, it's, it's an electronic leash. If, if that's, that's the way I look at it. Um, but don't you also think that all this enhance, we're enhancing, like we're enhancing nature? Well, we can't really enhance nature now, can we? No, but but uh, I remember um, one of my favorite movies is like a French movie, and it's um, it's called Microcosmos. It, it was made in the '90s or something, and they pretty much just enhance nature. How do you they go in with these macro um, lenses? on their cameras and then they did a two hour movie about bugs and insects and and slugs and um how everything looked in the microcosmos, right? Okay, but how do they enhance it? Because it was a way better experience. It was an enhanced experience of nature though. Okay, so it was so pretty. Okay, so it was just enhanced view. A view was enhanced. Mm. Not yeah. they didn't actually enhance nature. <laughs> no, they didn't do anything to nature. I, I, well, I don't know. They filmed it. Okay. But it was a it was an awesome experience, right? Uh, I hear about enhanced sounds, right? Because I was looking for. Um, I'm trying to decide whether <laughs> this is a big choice in my life. Uh, whether or not to go with plug-in headsets or earphones for when I go to work, and then the ability to wear a hat, a or hat? keeping my earmuff, yeah, a hat, like for winter. Okay. Or wearing my big ear um, headset, which doesn't allow for a hat, and then I gotta uh, crochet myself a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a big choice, though, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> well, it determines my whole um, winter outfit, though. <laughs> but, but I mean, do you wear your headset on the train? Always. Really? I always listen to music or books or stories or something on the train. Yeah. Okay. So you can see if I have little ones I plug in, I can wear a hat. So I was looking at these headsets, trying to decide whether or not I'm going to be a hat person this year, right? So what you need is a hat with a headset built in. That would not in any way look good. <laughs> <laughs> I already thought about that. I tried drawing a couple, figure out, can I do that? No. Uh, okay, okay. I don't think so. But then, you know, everything was enhanced sound, right? Well, I, I, I like enhanced sound. Uh, I, I like uh, crystal, you know, clear, uh, high-fidelity sound. But doesn't it just get more and more artificial, though? Well, no, I, I mean, I don't know, does it? That's my question. Oh, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, if, if you take, like, you take, like, uh, the old uh, analog type recordings, like a, 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 an album or or, a, or tape or whatever, uh, that were analog, um, they they had their, they had they sounded great as long as everything was fine and crystal clear. But uh, they generally weren't always fine and crystal clear. 
because with albums, you know, you wind up with pops and clicks and things like that. And with tape, you wind up with, with hiss, hiss from the heads that you get. Mm-hmm. But with digital, um, you, you, you miss out on some of the finer nuances depending on uh, the, the, the recording sample rate. So, I mean, if you're talking about 128 K bits, uh, then, then it sounds okay, fine on most systems. But if it's a 320, a lossless, uh, uh, recording, then you get a lot more. Uh, but, but so is, is that better? Um, then, I mean, hearing it live and natural and that. So, I mean, obviously you can't beat live, right? No, because that that is. But the, just the, the, the more we enhance things, well, I I understand the music became artificial in the moment we recorded it, though, right? I would say so. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it, but then does the enhancement make it more and more artificial? I don't think so. I don't. I don't. Not think even so if it's there. food, though. Well, that's different. That's you're not. I, 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 because I mean, what they do with food is not really enhancement, to, in my my way of looking at it. I mean, if you take uh, like an ear of corn, and and you put all these various chemicals and additives and crap on it, then those things are are not natural, and that's not to me enhancement. That's detriment. That's that's degrading the quality. But uh, I guess they would call it enhancement, and and I guess for certain purposes it would be enhancement like it would it would last longer in storage or uh things like that but it does bad things to your body because fight you, diseases right well, fight, fight looking, diseases yeah. or cause diseases uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean a lot of the stuff yeah. they, they do to the food the water the air um it, it is i i guess in in certain ways of viewing it enhancement but in other ways it it's 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 very bad for you so uh because i would sort of claim that um enhancement in a way in most most ways is is uh the process of making something artificial um maybe maybe um uh, let's look at it from uh from like uh a drawing perspective. You're a, you're a drawer. You're an artist, right? Yes. Okay. So if you had just like a chunk of coal or charcoal to draw with, you could do some kind of stuff, but uh, you, you couldn't really get your, your point of view across as well as if you had like the full-on pencil or pen set, brush set, whatever it is you use. Um, so you've enhanced that piece of charcoal into to something that makes you uh, be able to to express your point of view better. Yes, but if I was um, gearing my whole process after enhancing my art, right? Right. Then I um, very soon I would be doing everything in the computer, though. Would you? If it was solely with the pro, you know, with the goal of enhancing my art. I would. Okay. Well, then I, I uh, you you probably use those like Wacom tablets that you could draw on, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, are those? Can you get the same type of image you would get doing it free form, freehand on a piece of paper with whatever implements you use to create the art? Uh, you can. Well, it would not be the same, though, right? Right. It wouldn't be the same, but, but but you you have a lot more possibilities on one of those. But sure. what you don't have is you 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 don't have the physical process of actually building up a, a drawing. Right? No, you don't. So, um, <laughs> so uh, I, I guess the computer enhances it with your possibility level, but. Um, it takes away, I think, a bit from your uh, uh, the, the way that you would well, do it on a piece of paper. Or, well, look at it with photography, though, right? We enhance the shit out of photography by making it digital. 
uh, digital photography Everybody. Has, has advantages. When I, when I learned how to photograph, I was learning in school, and it was like this big old camera. You had to put your hands in some bag to wind the film yourself. You put it in the camera. You took the pictures, and you only had so much and so many, and you had only one ISO quality of, of film in your camera, so you had to make sure the lighting was what you planned for it. And then you shot, shot your pictures, and you only had that much amount. And then the tedious process started, right? The the, of the developing, processing. Yeah. 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 The developing of the pictures and the film, and yeah, the actual development. And uh, that was one way. That was way way more work. It was and way more, more work, difficult. But, but but the artistry was much greater. Um, to me, in fact, I, the process was amazing because you had it in your hands. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, when I was a, a teen, I had a, 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 I made a little dark room, black and white only. Um, yeah. But I could do all kinds of great stuff. I, I mean, uh, first, first you do with the filters and all the various stuff you do with the physical camera, uh, and then you develop the film. And but the, in the um, uh, process of, of creating the prints, you could do all kinds of various things there too. Yeah, um, yeah. And and it was a, definitely a skill, a learned skill. Where a lot of the stuff with the digital, you don't you don't really need to be that skilled to do it. No. So, and I, mean, I did a lot of digital photo art too, but I'm just saying because you know, and people will say we enhanced photography though. We brought it to the masses too. Everybody right. can now take a picture, and they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And most of they them, do. most of them, we just don't want to. I don't care what you had for breakfast. Don't take pictures of that and put, post them up on the internet. Keep your breakfast mm -hmm. to yourself. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that you know all this artificial just took out a lot of that, um, um, the process of doing something, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it does give you. Um, a lot more capability to do various things you could not do without it. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know if that's, I mean, it's a, it's a variation, but is it an enhancement really? No, I'm just, I think I'm mainly getting to the point of uh, how um, this um, focus on enhancement, it really ends up taking a lot away from us though. It does. Because everything becomes uh, very fast, very easy, very accessible. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, computers were supposed to make life easier for everybody, but I, I think in some ways they've actually made it a lot more difficult. Um, I mean, just think about before computers. You were, you're not, you're, you're old enough to remember before computers, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. and and most things were pretty simple. I mean, uh, most most of the activities you did uh, were, were were fairly simple, and yeah. you go and hang out with friends or go on a nature hike or whatever, and um, you didn't worry about you didn't worry about having this this digital leash on you all the time. Um, and if you wanted to take photos out there, you had your camera, your your analog film camera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now everything is accessible, though, right? Everything it is doesn't accessible. Doesn't take anything but, to do anything. But 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 also the accessibility is also pretty much demanded at this point in time, where it used to be the the capability wasn't there. They couldn't demand that of you if you went off for a weekend, you know, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, there, there wasn't people trying to call you. All the time while you're yeah. off enjoying your your time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So so is, is the question the question? Uh, let me take another look at it here, just so I can be sure I got the wording properly. Is enhanced always better? Again, I'll say no. It is no sometimes better, sometimes not. <laughs> Yeah, and I think we have like um, because it leads kind of into the next thing though. The next question, right? Okay. Because because I think that all this enhance, you know, we are enhancing everything, easing everything, making everything less and less bumpy. Okay, so the question is, what are we growing on this planet? Mm. 
Right? That. Yeah. What are we growing on this planet? Well, and, and it'll, do you mean that as far as like plant life or human life? Um, maybe uh, in a more of a metaphysical way, though, right? Okay. So what what are we what are we nurturing and growing on this planet? Um, I, I hate and division seems to be the main course. <laughs> I mean, and laziness. Too. Well, yeah, sure, sure. Laziness, lackadaisability. Yeah. Lax <laughs> I don't know if that's not a word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so what are we growing? Uh, it, it, it seems to be going towards, you know, the the total global connectivity uh, where, where somebody's always got a, a way to peer into your uh, your life and your, your way of doing things. And, and from what I'm understanding from this, uh, this new stuff, it's uh, also they want to be able to see directly into your thinking. Yeah, actually, I have an article here. Um, uh, this is posted on uh, Summit News, uh, Summit dot News. Um, this guy connectivity is such a interesting word, there, right? Oh, it's it's good and it's dangerous at the same time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really is. So uh, anyway, c considering what's going on in the world with all this Corona nonsense. Um, and and various governments, the lockdowns and all that stuff. So this guy Schwab, uh, who's a member of this global financial whatever, um, uh, he says the Great Reset will lead to a fusion of our physical, digital, and biological identity. Implantable microchips that can read your thoughts. Uh, so it's globalist Schwab, Klaus, Klaus, I guess he's a German, Schwab. <laughs> I read his books. Uh, made it clear that transhumanism, which is what we're growing, I think that's the main thing they're trying to grow at this point, uh, is an integral part of the Great Reset uh, when he said that the fourth industrial revolution would lead to a fusion of our physical, digital, and biological identities which in his book he clarifies is implantable microchips that can read your thoughts. So um, the Great Reset is attracting a deluge of fresh attention in the aftermath of the Corona Bologna pandemic, which uh, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said was an opportunity for a reset. Uh, so the agenda is primarily based around dismantling the current capitalist system in favor of greater centralized technocrat rule, which will lead to a lower living standard, less fuel consumption, fewer civil liberties, and accelerated automation of jobs, which more robots, less humans. However, another key aspect to the Great Reset, or the Fourth Industrial Revolution, as Schwab calls it, is merging man with machine. What the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, digital, and biological identities, which can't say that enough. Um, anyway, he went on to explain how his book, Shaping the Future of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, was particularly popular in China, South Korea, and Japan, with the South Korean military alone purchasing 16,000 copies. So, okay, and, and, and there's there's plenty more to the article, but um, so that's and what he's, he that's, wrote some interesting books. That, that's what they're well. That's what we're growing on this planet is the concept of total connectivity, transhumanism, merging <laughs> human and machine. That's enhancement. That's right there. It's an it, act of enhancement. Well, it's an enhancement, but but it's also very dangerous. Uh, yes. I, I, I mean, do you want these chips that can read your thoughts and plant it in you? No, fuck no. No, but see, that's that's what no, they're going I, I for. I want to go. See, I want. See, this is the thing. They are going to technocracy, right? They're not technocracy, right? 
Yeah, I'm not. Go- I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there either. <laughs> no, I want to a- go back to something that's way more basic and um, solid in the, you know, connected to the ground. Right. They're connected to nature, the earth. Yeah. Right, and just natural stuff. But um, that doesn't mean I, I I don't like the robot stuff. Oh, I yeah, robots are cool. Yeah. yeah. yeah of course, you know when they when they take over your your means of gaining income, that's a kind of a problem. But um, well, then I think we have a, a, a social, pro- you know, we have a society and a community problem. Because there is no way it's a better world with human beings doing really really dangerous hard labor instead of robots doing it. Okay, well, no, I can, and I understand that for certain things, um, assembly lines, loading trucks, uh, mining, dig, digging ditches, yeah, mining, sure, uh, those things, uh, I mean, great to have uh, mechanical devices doing that rather than yeah. human labor, except for that yeah. there's a lot of people that depend upon being able to do that labor in order to make a living. Um, yeah, then we have to figure that out. Yeah, that's a, that's a big issue. That's a that's kind yeah. of a kind of a problem, which also goes. I back, think we can figure that out. Which also goes back to uh, the the brave new world situation. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> again, if you haven't read that or seen the movie, um, <laughs> I have not yet. It, it, yeah, that's uh, they they are that's a total technocracy. Uh, in Brave New World, that's that's the type of government that it is. Um, and, yeah. And every and at yeah. So, but they in there um, went, I, I guess, a step further. I don't know, depending on where 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 people like this Schwab are trying to go. Uh, but but they engineered uh, fetuses to be within a certain classification to perform certain tasks. You know, they had yeah. alphas, yeah. betas, gammas. Uh, deltas mm. and uh, epsilons, and mm. <laughs> and the epsilons were just smart enough to be able to go down into the, into the uh, nuclear uh, reactors and and work with nuclear stuff. They didn't last very long, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and then they they had the idiot deltas. I think they they actually call them the idiot deltas. Um, that were basically grown as hard labor, slave labor. Uh, and or you know domestics and those kind of things, um, and, and so. But don't you think we can turn it around though? Don't you think? Because because um, there is a lot of other things that we are growing on this planet too, though. Like what? Well, like um, love. Okay, and, but uh, yeah, but it, do, and do creation you... and just the the. The natural joy of when you connect to nature. Because I haven't met one single person who didn't feel better after connecting back to nature. Well, that's true. But do you see that as something growing or shrinking? Well, I think I'm actually seeing that the need for these pockets of not being connected to the artificial world, but being very connected to the real world, is becoming um, an incre- an increased demand, right? Okay, but tell me this. Mm. You, you used to live in the city. Yes. And now you live in the country. Yes. So when you were living in the city, did you get the feeling that more people were connecting to nature? No, I got the feeling that more people were getting back to the ground, to like grounding with nature, yes. Okay. Because yeah. when when I lived in San Diego, it, it, these people all seemed pretty much like automatons, uh, you know, just going about their daily whatever. Um, but there are plenty of people who do that too. Yeah, but out out here in uh, in in no man's land. <laughs> 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 Tim Buck but too. with all this time, you see, all this automation, though, right? It should buy us a lot of time. It should, and with but... all that time, yeah, all that time we should spend on on doing something that you know makes good and that is very real. But but for like, my like my... you know, you bake bread, right? I do. 
that whole process of of um, making those ingredients into the process and you end up and you put your labor and your care and your knowledge and your skill into it and you end up with a certain kind of bread the way you wanted it. Right, but but for most stuff, for most bread that I make, all, all I have to do is just dump a bunch of stuff into a, a machine and it makes the bread for me. But why would you do that, Because <laughs> it's so easy. It makes really good bread. It's really good bread, for, you know, depending on what ingredients you put into it. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that that's really my, my thought process is, is okay, what am I going to add into the bread this time in order to so so you that, don't do any kneading or feeling? Does that machine does or... all that. Uh, I, I, okay, I, I do kneading for, like, if I'm making banana bread or if I'm going to make pizza dough or... Uh, other you know types of things, cookies. I, I need that though. Um, yeah, sure. But for for your average loaf of bread that you're just gonna make sandwiches with, or toast or whatever. Um, yeah, I, 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 the machine does a very fine job of it. <laughs> I would never do that though. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> See, you are a lazy technocrat, Grimnir. <laughs> I am a very lazy. But okay, anyway, back back to the thing that you said. All, all this uh, technology should make all these things easier and give us more time and all that. But yeah. what I've seen, my personal experience with uh, the computers coming into the workplace and your improved productivity. Oh, they just want more and more productivity out of you. Well, now you're doing what you used to do in eight hours in three hours. So we need to see more productivity out of you. So you're going to do what what you were doing, you know, in eight hours before in three hours, but you're going to do it for eight hours so we can get, you know, over double the amount of productivity out of you uh, mm -hmm. within the same time frame. So, so you don't really get any more free time yourself. The company gets more profit. But that's because, and in, in, you know, if we are to be completely fair, right? I, I think we talked about this last week too, the whole, um, you know, it's, it's what, 20% of the labor hours in, in the modern society goes into actually producing something? Probably. I, I don't know. I mean, if you look at people on the production floor, they're, they're pretty much working eight hours a day. Uh, if you look at people up in the administrative areas, the offices, uh, there, there's a lot more time chitter chattering with with coworkers and uh, goofing off or going to meetings, which are like waste of time, generally speaking. And you got you got a whole line of business like the one I work in, which we is, don't even produce anything. You do economic stuff, right? I'm in finance. Yeah. It doesn't produce anything real. That means anything to but anybody. what you but what you produce helps other people produce stuff better, yes, right well, I'm in retirement though right oh okay, yeah <laughs> it's retirement <laughs> retirement savings all right, so then that helps yeah. other people live better down the road. Yeah, but but as a society as a whole, um, the whole money thing doesn't contribute with anything. It's an artificial thing that we created. You know, it's it's like um, having a hammer the size of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. It's not really all that practical. It takes a lot of resources, and you got to be like a million people to put in a nail. Okay. So there is so much of all, you know, at all the labor hours in a society, there is so much of that that are just pseudo. It isn't really doing anything. Yeah. If we really wanted, you know, if we as humans, we said, we really want to use all this technology and all this enhancement that we build all over everything. If we wanted to use that to maximize the time spend on planet earth you have to uh think and do arts and create and live and be happy and pursue your interest and keep the work and labor to a bare minimum right, right. we could do a whole lot better than these 40 hour work weeks sure yeah no i i mean i <laughs> you have all this artificial stuff on top of it 
Okay. Because what there is, you know, what we really need is, you know, so it you know, the 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 bare um, just you know the resources that you use for a life and you use for living and for creation and for doing and for being alive, right? Right. That doesn't take a whole lot of labor to produce. Not really. Not really. No. You have all these other people who, on top of it, are having to get their, you know, their jobs administering all this. Right, right, and that that's way, way too heavy uh, on the balance of of the labor uh, that's being you just, done. You just, you just, you were the one who reported on um, the the Bank of Germany coming out saying that we have to put a tax on non consumption, right? I don't know if I was me or not, but. It sounds like something I would say. Because <laughs> yeah, the Bank of Germany just came out this this week and said, uh, proposed a tax on 5% on working from home. Oh, right. Anytime that you get a, that you're being benefited by some way that they're not getting a slice of, they want a slice. Well, the whole, the whole, uh, um, um, the model behind that is that the Western economies can't afford that about 60% of it works, its workforce doesn't travel and consume. Right. So the economies can't, can't handle less consumption. So oh. in order for that to balance out, then they need you to pay an, an extra 5% in tax if you're working from home to balance it out because of all the the consumption you would do. Right, and they consider them not being able to steal X amount from you a loss to them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it just goes to show you can't, our economies, that's what the Bank of Germany really said is that our economies, which is yours and mine and all the other ones that we are living under, are so growth and consumption based that they really can't handle a stagnation. Right. Which is insane. It is insane, yeah. I mean, the, the the constant idea of of having to always grow in order to stay alive uh, is 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 nonsense to me. It's always been nonsense to me. Uh, it never made sense that if, nope. you know, looking at the stock market it, the way it used mm -hmm. to be before it became as manipulated as it is now, um, mm -hmm. where. The only way a stock's value would go, or price would go up, not value, but the stock's price would go up, is if that co whatever company the stock was tied to had X amount of growth. And the, the more growth that company had, the more the stock went up uh, in price. Uh, again, not value. And, and growth being um, an increased gap between what you spend and what you profit, right? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. So no matter, it, you can do that by lowering the the production cost or or um, increase your prices, right? Right. Yeah. So if the price went up, your stock would go up. If you laid mm -hmm. off a whole bunch of workers, your your stock price would go you up. You increased your yeah, because you increased the the gap between your spending and and your um, income. Right. Yeah, which is insane. It, it's absolutely insane. But that, yep. that's how the stock market works. <laughs> it's how every growth-based anything works, though, right? Yeah, well, and, and most of those are based upon... Well, see, if you're like a small, independent company, um, you like growth. Sure, it's fine, but you don't need it to survive. I mean, if you've got a good customer base that always comes in and, and you can maintain that customer base, you'll you'll keep on doing business fine at a certain level. If you then go public with your company... Uh, then you're expected to do constant growth. So, I guess yes. that's yeah. I, I guess that's what you're meaning on that. Um, but but because the last 15 years you got the startup economies though, and the startup economies they're pretty much just in a race. Because because they're buying customers right. So yeah. they're because they need they they need their growth gap to be so big that somebody will invest in them. And since every investor just looks at the growth, they might look a little bit about the, the product and what's its opportunity gap in and its timing into some market. But they pretty much, as you say, look at the growth, right? Yeah. So they're buying customers. Exactly. If you look into all these startups, 
they have a key performance indicator that really is the acquisition of, of um, you know, the cost of, of acquiring new customers. Yeah. Because they're just inflating everything. So everything is just overly grown and artificial to the point of nothing is real. So, so that really goes into the uh, the next topic there. Do we really want growth? Yeah, do we really want that? Well, in, in some things, I suppose. But, uh, again, you can't be absolutist about anything. Hey, wait a minute. I just said you... Uh, that sounded like an oxymoron going on there. Um. <laughs> because if you look at, well, this is what one of the biggest mysteries to me, right? Well, it's not really a mystery. But if you look at the whole talk about um, the climate change and the CO2 and we have to... Um, we have to lower the CO2 levels and, and lower our resource spending, right? And none of those people, especially not that great a Thunberg lady, right? Well, see, I, I, I don't I don't None believe, of those people talked about planned obsolescence. I, I don't believe in the whole CO2 global warming nonsense. No, I understand that. But you would agree that we do overproduce and we pollute the shit out of the of the environment, right? Oh, absolutely, and a lot of it is waste. A lot, of, most of it goes to waste. Uh, well, right now they're working on the phones that they're going to come with in three years. They're right. already done with the one they're doing in two years, but they're not releasing it because they want to do the ones they're doing next year first. Right, which is insane. Which is an insane way of of spending resources, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all these these phone crap going to. 5G, 6G, 12G, whatever, um, and not. But it's in every piece of of it's in everything stuff you buy. They build in planned obsolescence. Sure. And it used to be, uh, not didn't used to be that way. Obviously, you could uh, buy a car that would last for 40 years if yeah. you if you took care of it properly. And and now, yeah, there's some crap is designed to break after a certain period of time. Yeah, they, it, it said. It is said. I don't know if it's true, but it is said that uh, in Russia, uh, people traded more with the um, scrap parts for the Trabant cars they drove there than they did the rubles. I would bet that would be true. Yeah, anytime you have a and it was a more reliable um, currency to have some uh, parts for the cars. Yeah, I, I believe that to be true, and it could go that way. Um, well, here in the U.S. It, uh, depending on how this situation, I mean, they they keep on shutting down businesses everywhere and driving people out of business. Um, yeah. Uh, wouldn't the, uh, whatever this reset crap is, great reset crap, uh, happens, uh, you're going to find a lot of people that are destitute. And uh, if they have certain things, whether that be car parts or uh, food, mm. tools, whatever, um uh, they'll at least have some trading currency, trading capital there. Um, but see, we are not resetting the ruling class, though, right? No, 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 of course And the not. old bloodlines are not getting reset. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. They're the ones doing the reset. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> yeah, they're, of they're, others. <laughs> they're, they're not the ones being reset. They're just doing no. the reset. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, growth in some things is fine, um, but uh, just 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 doing well, it really growth depends on what you're growing, though, right? Of course. Yeah. And and as I said at the beginning, I, I, I what I see growing mostly is a lot of hate and division. Uh, that that's what I see growing um, from my perspective, the way I read. Uh, the, the news and see the world out there as uh, people yeah. are coming uh, are becoming more self obsessed, uh, greedy. Uh, Do you think we are being grown? You think there is somebody growing and that you're like the we're the petri dish they're growing all this hate into? Well, you know, yes, yes, I do through through the various uh, methods of communication that 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 we are allowed to view. Or C, um, yeah, they, they want to create hate and division um, be, because yeah. that gives them more power. Be, because they could say, look, these guys over here, 
that don't do exactly what we we want, they're the bad guys, and the guys on the other side will point back to the other way, and so they and they can divide you in all kinds of various ways, whether it's age, uh, gender, uh, color of skin, religion, nationality, uh, all kinds of various things um, that, that they can point at and, and group you in. That's what that's why collectivism is such a nasty thing. But people love their collectivism. They want to be a part of some group or another or many groups uh, so that they can hate on the ones that are not part of their group. Because that's, you know, we, we are we are now looking at uh, an American president, right, who claims he's going to unite people. <laughs> well, not, not quite. And a, that scares not, me not, because not, usually not quite when... a president. He's not quite a president. Oh, well, sure he is. No, he's not. The rest of the world already decided. Grimm yeah, I don't, it. but but you're it, just being a stubborn American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing: is the pe world society some, some people decided. some people are out there and they're really upset that that this guy is gonna be president or that guy should should have been. And it's like, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> who? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I get a little worried when the president of America is going to unite the people. Uh, yeah. It's usually when um, presidents unite people, it's, it's usually against someone else. Right. Well, it's unite under his way of thinking. Against those people over there. That don't think that way. Yeah. Right. So that scares me a little. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, collectivism is, is is one of the biggest issues, obviously, uh, when you you decide that this age group can uh, be this way or that way, or if you have a certain skin tone, you're good or bad. Uh, not ever actually getting into uh, the ideas too much of of what people believe or think and why they believe and think those things, because most of that's due to the programming that's been pushed into them in their whole life. So I'm just saying my um from my experience in life. Yeah. Um every time and I I I don't mean this to be like anti American, but it is a little bit anyways. Right. Um <laughs> <laughs> just putting out a disclaimer. Um but uh when when Americans unite Usually we see a ton load of wars everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That, that's that right. usually sends millions of people into refugees because, you and, know, and war and hunger and and all this. Because, you, you know, do you know what unites Americans, generally speaking? Yeah, war. But why? why? I mean, prior to that war... The, the Americans have to get behind it, right? They have to decide it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, but mostly what Americans get behind is, is some enemy, some unseen enemy, some dark dude somewhere in some part of the world, and, and he wants to do us harm. That's what they'll, they'll, they'll tell you. So you all get behind, oh, this guy's bad. He wants to come and attack us. So we're going to go over there and bomb the holy hell out of him. Um, yes. Yeah, and, and I'm sorry, Musco, I, I, but America is the number one war regime on this planet. Well, beyond any doubt, beyond any doubt, beyond it, you know. Yeah, you no, got no. plus a thousand bases in the world, but there are all others, over the globe. There are others that would like to take that uh, take that title from from America. Um, yes, and and they they would love to be the big war machine, but for whatever reason they can't. I, I don't know. Um, or they haven't yet. Uh, yes. uh, but with this great reset, who knows uh, where, where that's going to wind up, where that's going to go. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and again, right, and, and if you have to look behind uh, the cover, the face of what you're being told to find out who's really pushing these things, um, and it's not the people, it's it's not your politicians, it's, no. it, it, it always comes back to the banksters running the world. Uh, and, and they run both sides of the war. They create the enemy on one side, and they, and they create the 
uh, ones that will go and attack that enemy on the other side. And up to this point, over the last 70 years or so, it's been the U.S. And that, that could switch. That could be somebody else coming up soon. Coming soon to and it, a... And, 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 and I'm, none of you people are in that. Are in what? Are in that whole war regime. Everybody's it's, in the war machine, whether you like it or not. Uh, I mean, well, it's it's that's not, but it's not you people. It's not you people. You people. What? <laughs> it's just I'm I'm I'm. It's just a, a a ruling class acting upon us. Right. So it's the state. It's the you know. It's the nation of America. It's the state it's above the state. Nothing to do with the lovely Yankees who live there. But it, but it's not actually again not actually the nation of America. The nation of America is just a tool that is being used by by those yes, that are really ready to upon. show. Yeah. So it's completely acted upon. Yeah. So that, that's that's you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, let's get to I'm our just, final, you know. let's get to our last topic here because this is this is big this oh, is this important. Is, yeah. And and this is the title of the show. Right. Will right, right, right. Will giant meteor legalize cannabis? Will he? Well, will it? Well, see, he uh, <laughs> It. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, I guess it all depends on, on how 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 well it works out. Um uh, if giant meteor destroys the infrastructure of the modern society. Well, cannabis is not necessarily legalized, but ain't going to be anybody there to stop you. There won't be no <laughs> prohibition going on. <laughs> uh, so it depends on the effects, uh, the uh, accuracy, the uh, yeah. you know. The, the, but the would you, would people vote for a giant meteor if? It promised to be like uh, giant. Uh, giant meteor does not care about your votes. It doesn't. <laughs> it do, it don't. Oh, damn. It don't care if it comes. If it decides to head its way here, then then and 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 then it wipes out like let's just say it just ruins the entire electric grid of the of the yep. world. At that point, smoke all the weed you want. Ain't gonna be nobody there to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That, okay. But giant, okay, then I'm going to live my life as if giant meteor can come every moment. And the, and yeah, sure, you can. Uh, and, and and you can have all the nature you want. Everything will return to nature without without <laughs> the, without the electric grid out there um uh, you know, uh, which is uh, allows them to do all these things that they do. Uh, and, and of course, that powers the financial grid and uh, all, all the other bad stuff that they do. Um, so, the, the, but I'm, nature would look a little different, though. Oh right? yes, yes, it would look very <laughs> different because it, nature nature would start to take back over at that point, and and a lot of you know things, humans, animals, uh, fauna, yeah. flora would not survive. Um, <laughs> no, you'd had some big waves. So, you, so you'd have other issues to deal with. Oh, well, probably big waves, depending if it landed in the ocean or not. Um, <laughs> depending on I'm how, sure no matter where it landed, the, the, depending on how giant giant meteor was. Um, yeah, I'm or, talking dinosaur, uh, dinosaur like size meteor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, a uh, global killer. Yeah, yeah. So, so the population. Is that not what are you think? Are you thinking like it's smaller cousin? Oh no, no, no! I'm not thinking that. I mean, unless okay. it, you know, you could direct um, giant meteor to split into a bunch of pieces and only go after the capitals of uh, every oh. of every state. <laughs> You're doing a smart meteor. <laughs> smart meteor, yeah. <laughs> like take... those smart factories, and yeah. smart cities, the, 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 the smart... fourth industrial revolution. Yeah, the, the the smart meteor that just wiped out the state wherever it went <laughs> and left the you know the rest of the people going. Um. <laughs> if that's called the Larkin Rose Bomb. Okay, <laughs> but at that point, uh, yes, but you know, giant meteor would um, you know not the word legalize. I was I've never been real fond of, but yeah, yeah, it would make it the it would end prohibition of everything um, that you're currently prohibited to do. Because some, yeah, and and breathing too, maybe. 
Well, yeah, see, but that at that point you don't really care about weed, do you? No, but breathing. Is right, but I'm saying important. if you can't breathe, you're not really concerned about weed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It might be the last thought. I have never smoked enough weed. Well, there, yeah, there's that's, there's never enough. I mean, what's enough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so I, you wouldn't actually vote for Giant Media then, uh, Grimmer? No more than you would vote for Cthulhu. Would it matter, though? See, Cthulhu, Cthulhu no. don't care. Cthulhu. <laughs> Cthulhu. Who is, who is that? Oh, I need to educate you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, I'm being educated. Oh, but uh, Cthulhu is a uh, well, a fictional creature, one of the the old one, uh, the aged one. Um, <laughs> it's from a story, uh, an old story, uh, the Call of Cthulhu. Uh, anyways, so it, 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 it just, it just, it will just kill whoever, everybody. What? But Does the, it but disco the, dance? Because it sounds like it's going to disco it dance. It could. It, if Cthulhu wants to disco dance, it'll disco <laughs> dance. <laughs> Did you, can you hear that sounds like a boogie town uh, kind of dance? Take me to Cthulhu, uh, Cthulhu Town. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't know, but 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 just like just like Giant Meteor uh, got a following, and elect Giant Meteor twenty sixteen twenty twenty whatever. There was also a Cthulhu following. Um, oh, <laughs> people want people. So look it up. It's C T H U L U, Cthulhu. You, you, you'll, okay. you'll, you'll, you'll see. You'll see all about it. It's one, one of the greatest, uh, I'd say horror stories, but I don't know. I wouldn't really classify it so much. Uh, anyway. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to wrap it up with that nonsense there. Um, uh, again, I'll say this much. Okay. If uh, Giant Meteor won't legalize cannabis, I am not going to vote for it. And again, it doesn't care. <laughs> Damn. But it's a vote. You can vote, yeah. And vote it's hard. Vote. vote and vote hard. It will change the world. We are changing the world. Vote by vote, Grimier. Oh, of course. Vote changes so nothing. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so again, um, Sock Puppet, get well, man. Yeah. Get, heal. Much heal. Love sock puppet. Be better. Yeah. Do not heal. let this, whatever this is, get you. Hey, and God, go look at Biden. See, Biden just won. Go play with him. Yeah, well, whatever. Um, <laughs> Does it bother you when I say that? <laughs> well, I, I, I just, he won. <laughs> Nobody won nothing. Yeah. Uh, there, there was never going to be any winning on that. That's, it's all picked and selected from those banks. I kind of figured yeah. I kind of figured I hit a few of your strings with that little line just there. Ah, uh, you know, whatever. Biden won. <laughs> <laughs> I've been strummed. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. So check the schedule on RealLibertyMedia.com, RLMRadio.xyz. Uh, for and what send love it? to Sock Puppet. What? Send love to Sock Puppet. Send your love to Sock Puppet. Send your healing yeah. energy, your vibes. Uh, come on, Sock Man. Yeah. He might not be a nice guy, but he's a really great guy. Right, exactly. He's not a nice guy, yeah, but he's not a nice guy, no. You know, he don't pull no fucking punches, man. He tells truth. truth. No, he's not nice, but he's a great guy. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I mean, whatever. Um, yeah. And uh, what else? Got anything else? Uh, let's see. Well, we'll be back next Monday. Uh, same same bat time. Um, <laughs> and in between there, there are other people who will be back and saying. Yes, there will. Silly stuff, too, and sometimes serious stuff on the radio. Yeah, and on Thursday, I mean, um, well, you, you get the uh, the Dropping Your Coil show, and uh, Rob Works, his good buddy, uh, will, will be on the show with him yeah. talking about stuff with Larry and, and Flash. And, um, yeah. And, 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 you know, if people want to just come up, pop up and do a show uh, during, they go the, deep. during tomorrow yeah. or, or, or Wednesday when there's no scheduled shows, go ahead, do a show. Um, yeah, do a show. Yeah, and then um, 
I don't, I'm not sure when. Uh, I think uh, beginning of the year, the, the dark table will be back uh, when Grammy yeah. Grammy gets done with her family stuff. And uh, Sunday, we Sunday yeah, we get you know the blues. Nice. Oh, Friday night, Freakers Ball. Did I mention that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, you didn't. Freakers Ball on Friday. Boop, boop. Yeah. All right. Anyway, check the schedule. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's been fun. And yeah. we will talk to you all next week, I guess. All right. Peace. Yep.